Hello and welcome everybody to the Biostock Studio here at the Medicom Village in Lund. Today I'm excited to be taking a closer look at Ultimovax, a biotech company based in Norway, developing a universal cancer vaccine. Joining me remotely is CEO of the company from Oslo, Carlos de Souza. Welcome, Carlos. Thank you, Michael, and um, hello to everybody. It's a pleasure to be here and tell you a little bit more about uh, Ultimovax. Well, uh, I just want to begin with a, a general question when it comes to cancer vaccines. There seems to be a lot of interest in cancer vaccines lately. Why is that in your opinion? Well, it, it's, it's, it's a positive development, uh, really. I think most of the current attention is derived from the COVID vaccines, of course, you know, that put the, the concept of vaccines more into the uh, you know the normal the normal population being more familiar. I think has been great to highlight the the all the developments that then be in uh, you know happening in the sector that in a way uh, have been you know flying a little bit under the radar. Um, and this is also important because uh, you know the, most of these companies that have these COVID vaccines, a lot of the science and the technology has been going on in those uh, companies for several years in the cancer vaccine space, uh, but not so visible. So this is a good development. I think now highlights the value of vaccines, highlights uh, the fact that uh, clearly we have new science, new technologies uh, to develop vaccines, and that is a, a very positive outcome. And uh, that you know, will, uh, will extend from and the anti-infectious diseases vaccines into the cancer vaccine space, what is uh, very useful. Yeah, indeed. Um, well, now I'd like to get into the nitty gritty. Uh, you just released some uh, very positive news last week regarding your uh, upcoming fifth uh, phase two clinical trial. And I was hoping you could tell us a little bit more about that. Uh, yes, we are very excited that, uh, you know, we we um, have now, you know, the possibility to initiate a, a fifth phase study, phase two study, uh, this time in uh, lung cancer, non-small cell lung cancer. This comes in addition to four other phase two studies that we are already running, uh, one in melanoma, in uh, another one in mesothelioma, in ovarian cancer, and head and neck cancer. Uh, and um, so we are very excited to, of now having the possibility also of uh, adding a new indication to our extensive program. Uh, lung cancer, as you know, is a very big indication, probably the, the, the cancer with unfortunately more cases in the world um, and where checkpoint inhibitors are, you know, really standards of care. And this is gonna be a great opportunity to uh, really try to show the benefit of uh, adding our uh, cancer vaccine UV1 uh, to uh, one of the, the standards of care, the one that is really more used, Pembrolizumab Keytruda from Merck Sharpton. Yeah, indeed. And uh, in connection with this news, you, you also announced a new private placement uh, to help fund not only this project, but other projects as well. So I was hoping you could uh, give us some details about this new capital raise. Yeah, it was, you know, a very successful capital raise. You know, we concluded this basically in the last uh, 20, 24 hours. Um, so we raised uh, a total of 270 million uh, uh, gross proceeds from this capital raise that was the the, the, the top of the range. Uh, the, a lot of interest for the for the shares, you know, the, the, the capital raise was oversubscribed. And uh, yes, yeah, so this uh, new capital raise is very important uh, for the company uh, in addition to fund uh, the um, initiation and the completion of this uh, new uh, phase two study in lung cancer. Uh, also, of course, uh, uh, we'll uh, be using part of the proceeds to continue further development of our second platform, the TED platform, uh, that is uh, developing quite nicely. So we need to make additional investments there um, because there's a lot of potential in that platform. So uh, that is uh, another use of the proceeds. Um, you know, we are confident in our data, so we also need to make some basically investments so that as a company, uh, by ourselves or with a strategic partner, we are ready to move into phase three as soon as we have the results from uh, the uh, current phase two uh, studies that will start reading out towards the end of 2022 and then in 2023. 
So we believe that uh, we should, as a company, to be uh, prepared for the next phase of development. And so we will use also part of these proceeds to basically accelerate uh, some of these investments. Uh, and in addition, of course, you know, fund the current operations and extend the runway uh, that is very important uh, so that when we have those results and uh, we initiate uh, partnering discussions uh, with uh, some of the big farmers, we have a solid uh, uh, cash position that allows us to be negotiating from a position of strength. Yeah, great. So, uh, and, and speaking of future development, uh, you, some other big news you received recently it was the uh, dual fast track designation by the FDA in, in advanced melanoma. Uh, what are the implications of this decision for Ultimavax and your candidate? That was, uh, you know, great news for us. You know, uh, for several reasons. You know, the first one, as you know, in order to be granted a fast track designation. Um, and the, the, the product needs to be in a, an indication that is of a, a medical need. And that is the case of an, a malignant metastatic melanoma. Uh, but also very important that we have already produced the data that shows the potential uh, to really uh, develop in, into, in, into that indication. So this is, in a way, part of the benefits is this is a validation that the data that we have produced so far in our phase two, phase one program, uh, both uh, the most recent study in combination with pembrolizumab that has uh, produced very strong data. And, uh, you know, also we were able to present this data at uh, ASCO, the biggest cancer conference, but also from a, a, an earlier phase one study in combination with ipilimumab, that is another one of the checkpoint inhibitors. And, and all that data together uh, really gave confidence to the FDA to to be granting uh, to be granting this uh, fast track designation. So this, from one on one hand, is very important as a validation uh, of the data. Uh, the implications are you know are uh, very positive for the company. This means, uh, for instance, that we will have uh, easier access to the FDA as we discuss the the next steps in the development of UV one in treating cancer patients. Um, and also, if the data is positive, uh, you know, increase the probability that we definitely will be discussing with the authorities for, for instance, a conditional approval. Uh, as, of course, other benefits that will also come uh, later on, uh, but is, is primarily the fact that uh, uh, puts us in a, in a, in a more uh, closer contact with the FDA, uh, get their feedback on our development plans earlier on, um, and really uh, improve the likelihood that if if we continue to show uh, strong data that uh, you know we definitely can discuss with the authorities for a conditional accelerated approval. So we you know overall we look at this uh, very positive for the company uh, from different angles. Yes, it sounds very positive uh, indeed. Uh, I'm assuming, especially for the future development of of UV one, how how will this decision, um, let's say. Um, let you decide on new clinical trials with, with UV1? Well, you know, that's the part where, uh, you know, we will need to, to discuss with the authorities. You know, um, I think we were, uh, we were clear that, uh, you know, one of our phase two studies, you know, the initial study in malignant melanoma in this indication in combination with ipilimumab and nivolumab, uh, you know, will continue supporting the plan. Uh, of course, we have the other uh, combination when we add on to pembrolizumab, and that's uh, you know a future development that we will need to discuss with the authorities how we are going to uh, to implement that. And uh, we will, of course, after this news and after now we you know we we secured uh, some capital for this new study and the, the other activities. Then we'll let us focus really on the future plans. Uh, to develop um, uh, UV1 in in the specific indication malignant uh, melanoma. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'd like to finish off by asking you a more general question uh, revolving around the around the company itself. Uh, Ultimavax is a rather small company, let's say, uh, but you have such a broad uh, clinical. A pipeline, including four phase one trials and now five phase two trials. Uh, what's your secret for keeping it all together? 
<laughs> well, you know, I, I think that the, the secret is is an excellent team. You know, we have an excellent team. You you know you very correctly you, you know emphasize the fact that you know now we will have five phase two studies, all of them comparative studies with the proper uh, power in statistically. Uh, you know, we will be enrolling more than 650 patients in these five studies that are happening in, you know, all over the world, in US, Europe, uh, and, you know, Australia. Uh, so really requires a good education from the medical team, the clinical operations, you know, everybody in the company to really uh, support this program. And of course, the additional activities that we have also in terms of the, the other the other technologies. So I think the secret is, um, you know, we all know from uh, um, myself and the rest of the team that uh, what we want is to make an impact on uh, cancer patient lives. That really provides the strive, uh, the competence of the team, and, and really a big dedication. You know and that is required when, as you know, we have been operating like everybody in very tough circumstances due to the to the pandemic. You know, and despite the fact that we had several months of working from home, you know, this really uh, didn't impact on us delivering everything that we had promised at the market and uh, continue to enroll patients in all of our studies, despite all the challenges. So, so this is really, I want to, uh, to use this opportunity to really uh, give a big thank you for the dedication of this great team in um, you know, reaching all of these uh, goals and achievements that we have been uh, getting in the, for the past 12 to 18 months. Well, great. Uh, thanks so much for answering these questions, Carlos. And uh, it'll be exciting to keep following Ultimovax in the coming months. And uh, we wish you all the best. Thanks, Michael. Thanks for the opportunity. And uh, we look uh, again for other opportunities to be in touch with, uh, with you and, of course, your audience. So thank you, everybody.